What's up, everyone? It is Dr. Charlie, physical therapist here. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you a totally new, and here's a really cool thing, pain-free, you heard that, pain-free way uh, to use uh, a foam roller uh, if you have piriformis and or sciatica to kind of kickstart the healing process and sort of shift your approach. Now, that being said, um, if you're anything like lots of people I work with, with some type of unresolved back butt and or sciatica problem, it's probably pretty darn likely you have a bunch of different massage, either devices or tools or rollers or balls or something like that. So you can still use the same concept and sort of repurpose those things um, because there's an old school way that you've been using this. And I want to show you sort of a different approach. And again, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Dr. Charlie Johnson. I am a physical therapist and I have my board specialty in orthopedics. Uh, essentially what I do is I help teach people with unresolved back, butt, and sciatica problems how to fix their own issues so that uh, they don't need to feel dependent and or reliant upon other folks to fix them. And um, ideally, uh, you don't need pills, shots, or surgery to solve this because we know that they don't work that well. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, please be sure to hit the like button as well as subscribe because I have a ton of content around this topic. And real quick here, um, the purpose of this video is not to help you figure out if you have sciatica problem uh, versus piriformis problem versus something else that might be causing a literal pain in your butt and or down your leg. Um, basically, I've laid out all my algorithms and all my sort of uh, diagnostics. I show you exactly how you can figure that st stuff out with as much certainty as possible. Um, you can just click the button somewhere around here and you should be able to download that for free. And that being said, let's jump into uh, talking about how we can use foam rollers and other uh, spiky objects and things like that um, in a different way to actually start resolving your symptoms versus aggravating them. So in this video, we're going to cover just a few things. There's probably more, but here's the high level. Um, number one, what science says about foam rolling, because I guarantee that if you've had this problem, chances are you've probably tried something or something like it. Um, how not to foam roll, uh, and then sort of what to do instead and why. And so here we go. If you're dealing with some form of pain in the lower back, butt, or leg, sciatica type issue, you've probably seen some of these recommendations. How do I know? Because they're all over the internet and they're very similar with maybe slight variations of how you position yourself on the foam roller or the foam roller itself, right? But this is super common and it's sort of proposed to release piriformis as you see there. And I guess you can try them if you want, but my experience just tells me that foam rolling hurts, right? And um, rolling or smashing a painful buttock, back, or nerve is just a bad idea, and it makes most people worse. And it often is so uncomfortable and yucky that there's a uh, term that's been coined uh, called foam roller face. And here's what mine looks like. Now, here's the weird thing. Uh, if this is true, and if it really hurts that bad and doesn't really um, help many folks, uh, then why are so many people recommending it? And the truth is this, like, while I can't say for sure, I think it comes down to this theory versus science. So most folks who are recommending these types of deep tissue foam rolling massage types interventions are operating from the belief that these techniques loosen tight muscles, break up adhesions and release fascia or trigger points, or maybe they're getting paid by the sponsor to recommend them. Makes sense in theory, if something's tight, try to loosen it up with some form of massage or manipulation to try to kind of knead out or loosen up uh, the knots, right? But the theories just don't hold up. So science shows little to no impact of foam rolling on really anything, maybe some muscle soreness after like a long, hard workout or something like that, but um, it's just too painful. It's just not worth it. We've seen little to no change in flexibility, which is why people do it to loosen things up, right? Or performance. So you can see here in uh, the International Journal of Sports PT, uh, where they looked at the immediate effects of foam rolling and stretching on the IT band, right? And could it lengthen it or could it not? A lot of people roll in their IT band and that definitely gives you foam roller face. So uh, the conclusion is that the interventions have no impact on the stiffness of that. They don't loosen it up, right? And I think the uh, Aaron, I think is his name from Squat University had this right. He's a smart guy. Um, here, foam rolling the calf right in front of the thigh to try to loosen up uh, these muscles in that area, in the calf, in the ankle, in the thigh, things like that, um, as well as sort of using foam rolling to improve performance or jump height, right? What we saw is that the jump height did not improve, performance didn't improve, and muscular stiffness of the areas which were foam rolled reduced um, just a little bit. But then within 15 minutes, they were back to normal. So it's a very transient effect, almost like if you were to get your neck or your back cracked. 
we looked at the effects of foam rolling on ankle range of motion, right? So if you're a runner and you've been rolling out your ankle because you think that it's going to help you, the truth is, is that it was very short term effect. Maybe it reduced uh, some stiffness in that area for maybe up to 30 minutes. But again, is that useful? Not really. So in fact, I'd argue that foam rollers and deep tissue massage do more harm than good, right? Especially when dealing with these kind of nerve related issues, these nervy issues of the back button legs, nerves are super, super sensitive tissue. And if you start smashing them and uh, yanking on them and compressing them, they're not going to like it. So not only do these techniques evoke a painful response, right? They hurt, but their proposed effects exist only in theory and not in science. I'm not one for sort of dot-com uh, articles, right? But uh, I thought this was interesting. Uh, foam rollers don't work. Understanding myofascial release had a bunch of different links there. So you can check it out if you want. And look, this whole idea of it loosening things up and resolving your pain, right? Just defies logic. Because think of it like this. If you had a bruise on your arm, some type of injury, if you will, right? Would you poke it? Would you, if your child ran in and say, hey, mommy, look at this huge bruise I got today. Would you be like, oh, hold on, honey. Let me just rub it. Let me take a, um, what do you call those things? A rolling pin, right? Or a foam roller or a massage ball or a massage gun and start thumping it. No, that would be a really bad idea. And people would look at you like you were crazy and the kid would probably slap you, right? So um, point is, is that you wouldn't do it for some other area, in this case, an, an, an obvious injury. Um, but a lot of times piriformis and sciatica problems are sort of similar. Uh, there might be some structural irritation of the tissue and just pushing on it, pressing on it, um, and you know, trying to work it out doesn't do anything but continue to make it hurt. And also knowing that blood supply is super important during the healing process for these uh, issues or for any area of the body that's trying to heal, right? To deliver oxygen, oxygen and nutrients that flow through the blood uh, to the injured area, then compressing the tissue in the area of injury just reduces or cuts off the blood supply. So think of it like a sponge, right? So if you're kind of kneading out the area, if you're constantly pulling on it and or foam rolling or twisting things or thumping things, whatever it is, um, then, you know, instead of water coming out of the sponge, you're essentially wringing out the blood supply to the tissue, uh, at least temporarily. Now, chances are you've got some form of foam roller, massage gun, myofascial, myofascial release tool, and or a bunch of other gadgets, like I said in the beginning, in your closet um, that you've been using to, you know, try to loosen things up or get relief. But now that you know that none of that stuff, which is proposed to happen when you use those tools or devices, right, actually happens, you might be wondering, okay, so what do I do with all these things now? Do I resell them? Do I throw them away, right? Um, no, not yet. Here's how I would recommend you repurpose them and probably more importantly, why I would recommend this. So I wanna take a moment and look at this whole pain that you're experiencing from a completely different angle. And I'll tie this back to foam rolling here in a minute, I do promise, but um, kind of a quick side shoot here. If you've been following me on my channel, you may have noticed that I recently, just the other day, posted a video where I talked about releasing piriformis syndrome pain. You can probably check that out, I can link it here. And in it, I talked about some common things that folks who deal with this form of pain do or place upon themselves, which causes them to get stuck and have difficulty getting out of these back butt and or leg problems or you know, finding relief. And again, this takes a completely different approach. And here it is, pressure, worry, and criticism. So notice I'm not talking about the body at all right now. I'm talking about the reason that you probably have all these devices in your closet. And the reason you've been trying all these things is because you are in, you are in such a high alert state of trying to solve this problem, putting so much pressure around this problem, so worried and so sort of um, upset or frustrated or ticked off, right? You just want to get out of it as quickly as you can so you can get back to living your life. I totally get it, by the way. But that's probably why you have all this stuff to begin with, because you've sort of gone crazy. When you're in pain, you tend to go and say, don't take that the wrong way. But it often messes with our clarity and judgment, um, because again, it's a really sucky situation. And wanting to get out of this thing, the quicker you want to get out of it, often the more you do, because the more you do, the better the chance of solving this, et cetera. You can see where I'm going, but the truth is it doesn't work. And so if you have all of this stuff in your closet, right, um, it's probably because um, on the brain side of things, right, maybe it's just ingrained in your personality. You have some of these traits and or these behaviors surrounding your pain experience. 
pressure, worry, criticism. And so you're just mashing the heck out of things, pulling on things, tugging on things without really know what, knowing what the heck's going on and what you should be doing. Um, and so I want to approach this from a little bit of a different angle. Instead of using foam rollers, things like that to beat your body, use it to calm your brain, right? And to kind of look with it. So we're going to chat about that now. So look, I'm not going to rehash things in this video. I just did a little bit, sorry. But understand that all these things are behaviors. Place your brain on high alert and initiate a fight or flight response within your system. And that's not useful. Because remember, pain is just a danger signal. So these behaviors can continue to raise the danger flag within your system. They're perceived as threatening and fuel your pain. So what does this have to do with foam rolling? Well, one thing you maybe have not thought about, um, again, sort of shifting paradigms of how you're going to approach this, is that foam rolling massage is actually very good because it's such a potent and often painful stimulus um, at helping you attend your current state. There's no way you can be thinking about, I guess you could. Um, it's really difficult to be thinking about something else outside of it, right? Or continue to problem solve something. If you're foam rolling, you've got the foam roller face. So it brings you within and allows you to attend sort of to how your body is feeling. It connects you to the sensations within your system. And this is important because pain is so preoccupying. It can be all consuming, kind of like we just talked about. And you know, so much so that many of the people I work with become so focused on getting out of pain and solving the problem and figuring it out that they neglect themselves in the process. They're so focused on this versus this. In other words, instead of looking within and leaning into their experience, I know what you might be saying, why would I want to lean into this experience? It sucks. I get it. They're constantly trying to gallop away from it without taking the time to slow down and get in touch with what they're actually feeling. So how do you know if this is happening? This sounds kind of like high level, like theoretical, a little philosophical, right? So how do you know if this is something that's happening? You're kind of neglecting your internal state and you're just so focused on this problem out here that you're not really able to focus on what's in here or what's in your bottom. So for example, you might have trouble giving yourself permission to slow down, take breaks and just breathe for a moment. You might act as if everything's okay and sort of push through things because you know stuff just has to get done around the house, at work, et cetera. And or when sharing your story with doctors or other people, you speak very quickly, sort of like me, right? Trying to get everything out and have a tone of intensity or urgency or frustration or whatever it is behind your words. And yeah, I mean, this makes sense, right? Because often, at least a lot of people I chat with, um, it feels like, or you might feel like the person that you're chatting with about your issue just isn't listening, like you're not being heard, right? So they're all normal things, normal reactions, but this is what it looks like when you're sort of focused externally on fixing the problem versus internally to what you're feeling. So realize that as your, as your brain becomes um, incessant on thinking about and trying to solve your problem, basically constantly researching, researching, wondering, thinking, trying things, et cetera, this may pull you away from your internal state and cause you to become sort of disconnected, for lack of better terms, and be triggering a negative or high alert behavioral pattern. You are here, but you're just running around with your brain out here. So we need to reconnect, right? So stop, check in, and touch base with what you're actually feeling and sensing instead of trying to run away from it. There might be times when you need to use avoidance and run away from things, right? But run away is sort of based in fear that that thing which you're trying to run away from is dangerous. So let me rephrase. There may be times when you need to step away from things and take a break because symptoms are just too bad. But it's not a bad idea to stop, check in, and sense what you're feeling. And foam rolling, as well as other devices and balls and spiky things or whatever, can help you do that. So here's what I want you to try. The next time you notice pain and or other danger signal, you feel stressed, you feel anxious about your pain, you feel worried, your brain is just racing and you're like, oh my gosh, here I go again. I'm, uh, I'm getting really stressed out or like I can tell like I'm feeling emotional about this thing, right? Then instead of stretching, yanking, smashing, right? Or going into research problem solving mode and trying to get rid of the thing, don't. Instead, do this. Try foam rolling your mid-back or some other area outside of the area that hurts. And I just picked your mid-back. There's various reasons for that. 
Um, it's sort of a hot bed of the nervous system. There's a lot of different branches within the nervous system, a lot of different activity that sort of is regulated there. So, um, you know, try foam, foam rolling or massaging your mid back. And I'm just going to show you one or two ways that you can do that. Real quick though, two things before you do. Number one, it must feel pain-free. Obviously you're going to feel pressure, maybe a little bit of like, um, two things before you do. Number one, it must feel pain-free. Obviously it's normal to feel some type of pressure. Maybe your back will crack, things like that. All right. But true pain can't happen. And it definitely can't reproduce your buttock or leg stuff. All right. So if that happens, you've got to do something else and I'll give you an alternative and it's got to feel safe. It's got to feel safe for the brain. You got to say, Hey, this actually feels all right. It's good. Now, that being said, let me show you what I mean. Okay. So here we are. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the foam roller. All right. And if you're a woman, and I'm guessing you wear a bra, something like that, put it like bra strap area. And if you're a guy and you don't wear one, then you probably know where that is too. Okay. So somewhere like um, mid back or chest level, right? If you go too low, it's like, it's too stressful, right? Um, but notice my butt is on the ground and the foam roller. Um, it's sort of a fulcrum at, again, like my bra line. All right. So, well, not my bra line. I'm not wearing a bra. All right. But what you can do is put your hands here because remember, you're trying to relax and make this easy. And your butt is on the ground. It's not up. You'll see people doing stuff like this. I wouldn't recommend that. It's just too stressful, all right? And remember, we're not doing this to fix the body per se. We're just doing this to kind of give you a different stimulus. Um, so what you're gonna do is butt on the ground, hands behind the head, and you're just going to just relax over. And you can breathe there and hang up for a moment. And then if you want, root your butt down an inch so the roller goes up. We'll do it again. And maybe one more time down. But you'll just pick a few different levels and kind of work your mid back for a moment. Notice if you're tension, putting tension in your leg, I was just kind of squeezing my calves for some reason. Just relax them. Maybe focus on the breath as you do it. Now I lift my butt up and I go up, which makes the foam roller go down, right? And I would just hang out here and it might be 30 seconds. It might be 45 seconds. It might be a minute or two minutes. Honestly, it's not so much about the time. It's just about the idea of stopping to take a break instead of letting your mind run on with all these different danger signals and or your symptoms run on and you continue to chase them and pull on them and foam roll directly on it. Let's find a different way um, to go about solving the problem and really helping you instead of, again, running away to help you tune into the sensations that you're experiencing, but in a good way to help regulate or sort of turn down the volume or sensitivity within your pain alarm system, which is basically your nervous system. All right, so give that a try. Now, here's the thing. There's really no perfect right or wrong way to do this. You just want to do it in a way that feels good and feels safe, and usually you get a couple good cracks out of the mid back, uh, which makes people think uh, that they're doing something you're really not other than it just feels good, which is great. The other thing you can do is um, if getting on the ground is too yucky, right? Or that's just too stressful. Um, what you can do is you can take a, a ball, put it in a sock or something like that, put it in the back and just kind of roll your mid back on the wall. Maybe do like a little bit of a squat or something like that. And just on either side of the spine is fine. All right. So uh, again, you can even do this with a massage gun, have somebody else do it in the mid back, right? Uh, and or uh, some, uh, I'm sure they have those, those little S hooks, right? Those myofascial tools, stuff like that. You can still use it to apply the same concept, all right? And really, uh, the mid back is, again, not the only place you can do it. It's an easy place that often feels good when you're using a foam roller. That's why I recommend it. But um, you can use any type of massage in an area that feels good. So outside of the area injury, you're just not doing it directly. It might be on the other buttock. It might be in the mid back. It might be uh, sort of... Um, you know, in the traps or the neck, the side of the neck here, which often gets, uh, you know, some type of tension or at least perceived tension, whatever it is, you're going for something that feels safe and it must be pain-free, but that's just a simple way uh, that you can use a foam roller and or other devices and where you can do it and why. And a little bit of a reiteration here, but based off what we previously discussed, these are three reasons you should give this a try. So number one, stimulating an area outside of the area of injury, your buttock or your leg or your back or whatever, is often much less threatening than working directly in the area of hurts, right? So go back to that picture of a bruise. So if the bruise is here, 
Well, instead of like really pushing there, you might get away with pushing up here and that would be fine or down here and that would be fine. The idea is it's still a little bit of a stimulus to the nervous system, right? And can help down regulate things and help us uh, tend to our internal state without directly ticking off the tissue that's angry. And number two, this foam rolling technique generally feels good, right? You get a few pops, kind of get some, um, you get to breathe, you get to stop for a moment, you get to lay down, right? If, if laying down is something feels good rather than painful or hurt so good. Because if something hurts so good, it still hurts, right? And this gets you again, looking inwards and leaning into feel, things that feel safe and good uh, versus something that hurts. And finally, allows you a moment of pause and reflection to kind of snap that high alert fight or flight uh, behavior that's so commonly associated with pain, right? And it gives you a moment to slow down again, take a moment and pay attention to what's going on inside of your body versus, so being, versus being so externally focused on fixing this, solving this, right? And um, just getting caught up in the process. So now notice I've mentioned nothing about getting rid of knots or releasing fascia or breaking up adhesions. We have zero evidence, folks, that we're doing any of that. I'm using foam roller, again, as a way sort of into the system versus breaking up the system. So instead of using foam rollers, right, and these devices, this is a really key nugget, as a weapon, we use weapons to fight things. I'll create another video on this, right? To attack things, right? And defend things off or get rid of things. And to, in this case, beat your pain, literally, by doing things that hurt so good. Use them as tools, tools to help you or aid you in breaking the high alert pain states and attending what your body is feeling. And as a way to practice getting in touch, right? With your sensations in a way that feels good for once. So notice, this, notice that this approach sort of shifts paradigms, right? It jumps from one of trying to fix something that's tight or knotted or broken or restricted, right? Some issue within the tissue, some structural body-based problem to one that begins to sort of treat the brain. So by working in an area that is non-painful, but simply feels good, you're beginning to reassociate treatment um, with something that doesn't have to hurt, but feels, again, safe. So essentially you're teaching your system that movement doesn't have to equal harm, or in this case, treatment doesn't have to equal harm and challenging the negative feedback loop that keeps you stuck in pain. Because remember, that's really what pain is. It's a negative feedback loop. It starts with, hey, I'm moving my body or positioning my body in a way and it hurts. And my body goes, hey, brain, you might want to be aware that, that thing that you're doing is kind of uh, painful. And the brain goes, hey, you're right. You know what? I'm going to shut it down. Or I'm going to create some type of um, fear or concern or worry around that. Don't do that. Right? So it tells your body, don't do that. And what do you do? Um, you avoid it. Now, here's the weird thing. If you've been told to foam roll, you might actually do more of it. So you're kind of bypassing your brain's danger system, right? And safety system, if you will. So your body's saying, hey, like, um, it hurts when I do this thing. And your brain's like, hey, I don't know if I'd really do that. There's something going on down there. Uh, and you were told to foam roll. You were told to use a massage gun, right? It kind of hurts so good. So uh, maybe if you push through the pain, you'll come out on the other end. Got another video on that if you want it. Um, but instead you say, no brain, you're wrong. I was told to do this. I'm not going to listen to you. So you foam roll and you do more. And this is the impact of pressure. If you've watched my other video on that, that I just released um, on trying to solve these problems, right? You have pressure around trying to solve the problem. You're really trying to figure it out. And you see maybe a little bit of temporary hurt so good relief, which is what happens when you use these tools, foam rollers, things like that. They often kind of hurt so good and feel good in the moment. And then later they're often worse. So you get that temporary high and then you put five times more effort in. Oh, if I got a little bit of relief now, I'll just do more and more and more. So now not only are you bypassing what your brain's telling you, like, hey, foam rolling is painful. And I don't know if you should be doing it. You're saying, screw that brain. I got some temporary relief, but now you're doing it 10 times as much. Sorry, that amps me up. Right. And then Brain says, hey, hold on, that thing's dangerous. You move less, this and that, right? So it's a negative feedback loop and it just kind of boxes you in and you continue to do less and less in life because this thing strengthens. The goal, right, is to start to give you positive inputs in the body. Hey, I did that treatment. And usually I go to PT or Cairo and things make me worse, but that actually didn't make me worse. I think I'll be all right. Maybe I'll stick with that. Great. Now you start to move, right, in a way that doesn't hurt or do treatment in a, in, in, in a way that doesn't cause a flare up the next day. And your brain says, hey, maybe there's a way out of this thing. Why don't you try more of that? And your body does more, right? And your brain says, okay, we're safe. You move more, more safe, boom, 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 boom. And you're on your way. At least you're heading in that direction. It's not everything, but you're heading in that direction. 
So look, give it a try. It's a totally different way for you to maybe look at things, but go ahead, snap that high alert habit. Go ahead and uh, try to just give yourself a moment to attend to the sensations versus running from them. Because remember, we don't run from things that we don't like. I don't run from my wife or from my daughter. Sometimes I feel like it, but I don't. Um, it's because I'm not afraid of them, right? So pain is often something that can be very um, sort of scary and new and unfamiliar, and it totally makes sense. But give yourself a moment to, to sort of check in and use these things instead of as weapons as tools to attend to your internal state. Just get back in touch with what you're trying to do here, okay? So give it a try. That's all for now. Thanks, everyone. If you like this video, again, please subscribe for other like videos. Please hit uh, the like button, maybe share it or something like that, and uh, comment below. Let me know uh, your thoughts. Thanks.